It's found in beer, in pasta, in bread. It's in us. And now it's the focus of a multi-million dollar battle playing out in U.S. courtrooms. A battle a Canadian woman with cancer is desperately trying to bring to Canada. It's all about glyphosate, most commonly found in the world's most popular weed killer, Roundup, made by chemical giant Monsanto. According to this nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Remember when we learned that big tobacco had been hiding the science that linked cigarettes to cancer? Well, lots of comparisons were made this past summer when we learned of the Monsanto papers. We learned of allegations that the multi-billion dollar company had ordered up and ghost-written studies that helped the company downplay science showing a possible link to cancer. It all came out when this case went to trial. Dwayne Johnson is suing Monsanto, the maker of Roundup. Lee Johnson, a San Francisco groundskeeper whose job involved spraying Roundup, is now dying of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In August, he won a multi-million dollar lawsuit against Monsanto, now owned by Bayer, when the jury ruled Monsanto should have warned him about a possible link to cancer. Monsanto disagrees with the decision and is appealing it. But now, 11,000 people in the U.S. are suing the company. Just a couple of weeks ago, in a California courtroom, Monsanto tried to stop the latest trial, but the judge ruled against it, in part saying, although the evidence that Roundup causes cancer is quite equivocal, there is strong evidence from which a jury could conclude that Monsanto does not particularly care whether its product is in fact giving people cancer, focusing instead on manipulating public opinion and undermining anyone who raises genuine and legitimate concerns about the issue. So, what are the concerns? Here's a bit of background. What is glyphosate? It's the active ingredient in top-selling weed killers like Roundup. Monsanto first introduced Roundup in 1974, and it now helps the company make billions of dollars every year. It's sprayed on some of our biggest crops, like soybean, corn, canola, and wheat. What's it in? Well, it could be in your favorite beer or wine. You'll find it all across supermarket shelves. Environmental Defense Canada tested a number of products from Kraft Dinner, chocolate glazed Timbits, and found glyphosate in most of them. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency did a test too and found 30% of their samples contained the chemical. But here's the thing, the CFIA didn't include wheat and corn. Radio Canada dug up what the CFIA didn't publish and it turns out 70 to 80% of their wheat and corn samples contained glyphosate. Health Canada has argued that most levels found are so low, there's no reason for concern. So here's the big question, does glyphosate cause cancer? The scientific debate raged for decades and then, in 2015, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, ruled glyphosate is a probable carcinogen, meaning it can probably cause cancer. In the U.S., the Environmental Protection Agency stuck by its stance, saying it's not likely to be carcinogenic. Health Canada did a review, too, and also reaffirmed, saying glyphosate is unlikely to pose a human cancer risk. Monsanto insisted their product is completely safe. Where can you buy it? Well, farmers can use it. Can consumers buy it? It depends on where you live. Herbicides with glyphosate are banned for use on gardens and driveways in Ontario, which says they may pose an unnecessary risk to human health, particularly children's health. Ontario is among at least six provinces with some form of restriction on glyphosate. In Europe, several countries like France, Italy and Germany are planning to ban it. Joining us from Oakland is Brent Wisner. He's one of the lawyers behind the Monsanto papers, the Lee Johnson case, and the latest trial in California. So, Brent, after the Monsanto papers came out, Health Canada said that they found that troubling, that they were going to do a review. A couple of months ago, they came back saying that they reaffirmed their position, that glyphosate is okay. You actually went to Ottawa to talk to people at Health Canada about this. So how do you think that they are handling this issue? I think it's outrageous. They're continuing to bury their head in the sand and not actually look at the science. And the fact that Health Canada has turned a blind eye is really a disservice to Canadians and everyone else who looks to them as an authority for questions about public health. 
Health Canada's mandate is to protect the health of Canadians. Are you saying they're not protecting Canadians? Well, I don't know what they're protecting, and I can't speak for Health Canada or what they're doing, but I can say that they're wrong on the science, and when they're wrong on the science, people get cancer and people die. So there's a real health crisis in our society right now, and it's being bolstered and supported by Health Canada and here in the U.S. by the EPA. So why are they not following what you see as the proper science? They're treating Monsanto different. And it's hard to know if it's because it's a captured agency, if Monsanto has had so much influence on the regulators that they can't see straight, or if Monsanto has somehow cast a, uh, a spell on the regulators. I don't know. They, Health Canada used internal scientists, so they had their own scientists reviewing the work of other Health Canada scientists. Uh, some people here are suggesting that's a conflict of interest. What do you think? I think without question you need independent scientists, um, people who don't have a, a dog in the fight. You know, one of the things that Health Canada would have to do if tomorrow it said, you know what, we're wrong, we made a mistake, this stuff causes cancer, they'd have to admit that they have been wrong for over 40 years. They'd have to admit that people are dying or people have died because of that mistake. And that is a big pill to swallow. Brent, we'll come back to you in, in just a moment here. You've heard Brent's view, but both Monsanto and Health Canada maintain glyphosate is safe. But there's another Canadian angle to this story we want to tell you about. Radio Canada did a deep dive into the Monsanto papers. There are hundreds and hundreds of pages in them, and this is just a part. But in here, our colleagues found a crucial link between Monsanto and a Canadian company called Cantox. And get this, it's been hired on files like tobacco and toxic sludge related to coal mining. Back in 1999, Monsanto hired Cantox to produce some research on glyphosate. Its conclusion? The Roundup herbicide does not pose a health risk to humans. That study would go on to be cited over 500 times in the academic literature. Fast forward to 2015, when the World Health Organization calls glyphosate a probable carcinogen. Monsanto wants more studies. Where does it go? Back to Cantox, which by then had been bought by another company called Intertech. And what does it find? The glyphosate is safe. And the Monsanto papers make it pretty clear the company kept a close eye on the research. See this, for example. One email shows Monsanto checks in with an Intertech employee about the status of a paper saying, I think you and I should talk about how that chapter gets completed, as it is not exactly what I was expecting. In another email, Intertech sends Monsanto a draft version of an article asking them to look at changes. Monsanto's response, okay, I have gone through the entire document and indicated what I think should stay, what can go, and in a couple of spots, I did a little editing. The work from Intertech unanimously concluded that glyphosate was not a carcinogen, and that helped determine Health Canada's ruling that glyphosate is safe. So back to you, Brent. How central is this Canadian firm? I mean, these are the real scientists. You seem to be uh, alleging that they are guns for hire by industries with toxic products. I think that's exactly what they are. I mean, the simple fact is you pay them enough money, they'll write a paper and they'll put these good names on it. But if you look at the Intertech manuscripts that have come out with related to glyphosate, they were either written by Monsanto written by Monsanto's employees or tightly controlled by them. And then when people cite to them as authorities to say, hey, look at these people say it's safe, it creates the illusion of a scientific consensus that otherwise does not exist. It's, it's rampant corporate malfeasance, it's scientific fraud. But you're suggesting that Health Canada has endorsed some of what you're calling a fraud. I don't have to suggest anything. Health Canada has come out and told the world that it doesn't cause cancer and they're wrong, and they're basing that opinion on bad science. So they have made their bed and they're gonna sleep in it. And unfortunately, 20, 30 years from now, when you know we're out of these glyphosate wars, just like we were with big tobacco, we're gonna look back and say, this was a real mistake, a real failure of our regulatory agencies. They are on the wrong side of history, and there's no question about it. Brent Wisner, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Sure. Brent Wisner, the lawyer in California taking on Monsanto.
For its part, Bayer, the company that now owns Monsanto, says it hasn't sought to influence science outcomes in any way and didn't ghostwrite any science. Still, thousands of people in the U.S. are now taking Monsanto to court. We don't know of any cases in Canada. Wisner says that's because the system here is different, that it's really hard for Canadians to win enough money to cover their legal fees. Joining me now is Helen McInnes. Like Lee Johnson, she was exposed to Roundup in her work. Like him, she has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. But unlike Johnson, she hasn't been able to win any compensation, even from workman's comp. And guess what? The rejection letter from the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board cites the Cantox research as part of the reason for rejecting her claim. So, Helen, take me back to when you were a a parks worker at, in Niagara Falls and, and you raised concern about your exposure to the Roundup that you saw being sprayed. Well, I told him that um, if, he's, if the gentleman that's doing all the spraying is covered from head to foot in, I call, hazmat outfit with his uh, ventilator on and his whole nine yards and the rubber boots and gloves, He's protected. I'm not protected. I'm standing there in running shoes, shorts, and a t and a t-shirt. So, what's the problem here? And I'm walking in it while he's spraying it. You couldn't avoid it because it was airborne. So you raised concerns at the time. What did they tell you then? Um, that they would just move on and go spray somewhere else, but not to uh, worry about it because. Um, you don't know how much you have to ingest in order for it to cause a problem. But you don't have actual proof. It's very, it is very difficult to prove that one thing caused cancer. Exactly. 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 So where does that leave you? Well, I just keep trying. I just keep trying and fighting and, and that's my thoughts and I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to I'm going to take it right down to the end as far as I can go and pass it on to my kids to do the best, do the same. If they can, if I can't cure, or not cure it, but if I can't uh, correct it, hopefully they, somebody along the way can, will be able to correct it for me. How do you feel about Health Canada not changing its position on this in spite of the World Health Organization and the Monsanto papers coming out? Well, it's sad because what else have they turned their bl blinders to? I mean, they're supposed to be there to protect the, protect the individuals. And if they're not doing it, they don't want to be bothered. They don't want to disrupt these cor big corporations. Then what good are they? They're there for us. They're not there for themselves. That's my opinion. Helen, it's uh, so lovely to talk to you, and I wish you really all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was Helen McInnes in Niagara Falls. We reached out to Bayer, which now owns Monsanto and Health Canada. Bayer says plaintiffs have cherry-picked a handful of documents in an effort to discredit a small number of secondary reviews and that there is an extensive body of research on glyphosate, including more than 800 rigorous studies that confirm these products are safe when used as directed. Health Canada acknowledges that part of its decision was based on science in the Monsanto papers, but told us Based on the entire body of relevant data, the Monsanto papers did not influence the results of the glyphosate reevaluation and associated regulatory decision. They both point out that countries around the world have reaffirmed that glyphosate is safe.